have the pleasure of speaking with Robert Craig from Datable. How are you today? Great. Now, Robert, your recent revenue uh, results, you're up 77% in 2021. Was that correct? That's correct. So with those kinds of results, we've noticed that your shareholders did not respond with the kind of support one would expect. Can you tell us what those shareholders were missing in that news announcements they should take a look at again? Well, I just think the fact there's a couple of things there, the type of brands that we're dealing with, we only focus on Fortune 500 brands. And our trend has been to get into these brands in a very hyper competitive market in the US. I mean, all of our competitors want uh, these big brands as well. So we get in and with a, with a smaller program and then we propagate, we show uh, data, we show ROI and uh, we expand the program. So what I don't see, I think vendors or uh, uh, investors are seeing is that the size of brands that is a uh, little Vancouver companies going in and landing uh, based on differentiation. And then our ability to grow those relationships from maybe 10 or 20 or $30,000 into hundreds of thousands of dollars. So um, I think they're missing the, the, the potential this company has. Well, speaking of potential that this company has, we often encourage investors to take a look at the track records and the pattern of success of the CEOs that are running the company. Could you give uh, investors out there a little background about what you did before you got the ball rolling for Datable? Yeah, absolutely. This is my third startup. Um, so we uh, built here in Vancouver and, and we sell into the U.S. That's been the model is to, you know, Vancouver is a great place to live and to grow and have a family, but there's not a lot of industry happening in Vancouver. Um, we go after the U.S. market uh, simply because the budgets are bit, uh, bigger. They've all been technology companies I've built in the past and, and the, the budgets tend to be bigger and uh, Americans tend to make decisions faster. And so our model has been to build in Vancouver, sell in the U.S. and focus on Fortune 500 brands. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's one thing to say that, but it's another thing to, you know, go in and land, uh, you know, brands like Universal Pictures or Procter & Gamble or Serta or some of the logos that we have. Um, I think that we've learned uh, early on, I learned in my career with the first company, is that when you go into those boardrooms, if it's a technology company, you're probably competing against other technology and Silicon Valley companies, U.S. technology companies that are funded and backed by some of the smartest money in the world. So you're in hyper competitive situations, these boardrooms. If you don't show clear and concise differentiation, they're sending you packing. So in the first two companies that I built um, before this one, I learned that the hard way that, you know, it's one thing to go in there and try to sell these brands. But if you don't show differentiation uh, and, and service around that differentiation, uh, you're, you're not going to win the market. And I think that that's, you know, what I really bring to the table with this company is a track record going in uh, without a lot of budget, without a big team, going in and selling these large brands. I agree with you completely. And that's the reason why I just asked you that question. But why would a small company startup like yours be able to secure these large contracts? And, and if, if you don't mind, I'm just going to point our audience's attention to your universal contract. Not only did you secure the contract, so if you just explain to us what your competitive, the competitive reasons why they selected you. Um, but you've been able to renew it and actually expand that contract. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, well, one of the things that our platform does is different than uh, our competitors is um, we focus on first party data, uh, the ability uh, to collect first party data um, and not only collect that data, uh, which other brands do, but analytics modules that allow brands to understand that data. Um, we've got an analytics team. We just brought on uh, somebody from Airship, uh, you know, to help us as a data scientist, to help us look at the data we collect and help brands make decisions based on that data and strategies based on that data. And then the third step is to message consumers based on that data. So our platforms all in one allows brands to uh, engage consumers, collect first party data, analyze the data and make decisions, tactical decisions based on that data, data and then message consumers based on that, da that data on a one-to-one -one basis. So just we're talking about universal pictures. Um, being able to capture universal pictures customer, uh, build a, uh, uh, have them register, 
track what, what they're buying, when they're buying, how much they're buying, and then message them. So for example, if you have young kids, you might get family movies from DreamWorks. I might be an action guy, I get action movies. So the, the, the key is with our platform and how we win in the market is all in one automation. So collection, analytics, and then messaging in an omni-channel infrastructure. And that's a big differentiator with our platform as well, our ability to message consumers, not just through email, but we can send a message to consumer as a pop-up within a website or as an SMS message because we're connected to all the carriers. So it's one-to-one -one messaging in an omni-channel environment at scale. When we go in and show brands like Procter & Gamble, Universal Pictures, Serta, Kimberly Clark, these Fortune 500 brands, uh, we show them those capabilities in a platform that's all automated with compelling cost efficiencies, we generally tend to win. So you seem to be, you know, driving business development as well. Can you tell us what your personal favorite contract is that you've closed in the last six months and why it's your personal favorite? We've recently signed a, a, a contract with one of the largest betting companies in the world. And we're really excited about that. It's because this is a larger ticket item. And so this is just going to open up a whole new market for us, the ability to sell brands that are selling large ticket item uh, uh, products. So uh, we think the opportunity for this is, 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 is enormous because we're going to be able to go to not only other betting companies, but other companies that are selling large ticket items. Well, Robert, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I have people ask me all the time, who's in charge of sales? And I think we've just discovered who that is in this interview today. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy.